There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads. Happy New Year. I'm sitting in front of my window in the living room with the curtains slightly parted. What fabulous lighting. So I've decided that you can put up with the messy background. It's not that beautiful to deal with some fabulous lighting for the time being. And I don't have to freeze my you-know-what off to go outside. It's not that cold. It's a plus eight. But I don't really want to go outside and deal with all of the outside stuff. So let's give this one a shot, shall we? Yes, Happy New Year. I've had a fabulous reading week in spite of or maybe because of all of the other stuff going on in my life, I started and finished and bailed on books in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Started and bailed on books in the air, flying back to Japan, and now here I am a couple days later, still heavily jet-lagged, but to be, you know, truthfully, less so than in years past because of the, the wonder drug that I mentioned in my last Friday Reads. So, yeah... Let's get started. I have two bales to tell you about, one from last year and one from this year. I bailed on that Welsh novel from 1958. I don't know if I even told you about it. I better check that. No, in fact, I, I haven't told you about it. So I started and then bailed on a Welsh novel from 1958, and it was called A Toy Epic. I love that title. And the author is Emer Humphreys, and he is still alive. He's going to turn 100 in 2019. This was published in 1958, and I was quite taken with it. But I read half of it, and the lackluster prose wore me down. It just wasn't good enough writing to finish the story, and the story wasn't all that interesting. It could have been. It had some, a few interesting moments adequately told but not not uh, fabulously well told about four boys growing up in Wales I thought they were quite stereotypical one was going to become a lawyer one was going to become a priest blah 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 and it didn't veer too far from those stereotypes there was a little bit of homosexual tension in the story which quite interested me I don't know how biographical that might be but I was interested in that, but that didn't seem to go anywhere. It kind of seemed like a inane, an incompetent attempt to copy the waves. And the waves I didn't get along with when I tried to reread it last month, but it seemed like it was kind of echoing that in a way that just didn't work. I'd really want to hear Charlotte and Shani's opinion of this writer because he's supposed to be one of Wales' greatest, Wales' greatest novelists, and he's written a heck of a lot. Is there something else I should try? Uh, this one underwhelmed me, so I didn't finish. And that's very interesting because I thought, I'm so interested in Wales, I'm going to be scholarly about it and just read it for the importance that it is, that it holds within the Welsh literary canon. I can't do that. Those days are done. I am free. I'm a free agent. If I don't like a book, I don't care if I'm supposed to read it or supposed to have it under my belt. That's not the way I read anymore. And that is wonderful. But I did think, well, you're so interested in Wales. Just, he's a, one of the Welsh writers that you should read. Well, I didn't like this book, so I didn't finish. Oh, a little show and tell. This is a mug that I bought in Canada. And this is, I'm not sure of the artist's name, is it written? Monica, I'll put it, I can't read it exactly, but Monica somebody. And I, she's a First Nations Indigenous artist. And this fabulous graphic, this fabulous portrait is obviously of an Indigenous Canadian woman in tribal getup. And this is a fundraiser for the murdered and missing women in Canada. Thousands and thousands of Indigenous women have gone missing or been murdered over the last 50 years, and it's one of Canada's many shames. We love to hold our noses up about all of the racist bullshit that happens in America. Well, we're about 2% better, that's all. 
and this is one of the things and it's finally being dealt with politically and socially a bit and uh, so this mug and I, I loved it Mark Nash will be going aha I knew it at this bail I bailed quite quickly on Lanark by Alistair Gray this was a buddy read wow look at that glare because the graphic is quite over here I'll show it Scottish novel published about 1980 I went into it blind which I love to do but that often leads to a bail because uh, while the realistic beginning to the story was quite engaging it soon turned sci-fi like people changed into other beings and entered new worlds through a gravestone and uh, got dragon scale on their bodies and no 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 so Mel's still enjoying it good for her but this was not a Sean book at all it's a famous book it's got a, you've got a cult following and I don't care I didn't like it it just wasn't for me the dragon scale skin reminded me of Joe Hill's novel was it called the fireman which I wasted a precious month of my reading life pushing myself to read a couple of years ago and th th maybe that had a, a big influence on this because I will not read anything about dragon scale ever again all right the rest of my Friday reads is gonna be very positive because I have had a, a fabulous reading week since I last talked to you I have finished one, two, three, four books all of them at the end of 2018 I I think I started and finished this since I last talked to you, but anyway, I did finish it. Uh, it's a little confusing with time zone differences. And pretty one, Ulysses. Me, but it just wasn't a Sean book. However, but this is about a straight Japanese guy who's gay twin. This is the books that I have finished. I have started. No, in fact, I, uh, I already told you about this, so I'm going to amend my number. I have, since I last talked to you, I have finished three books. The first one that I finished was the Helen Humphreys Poetry, The Perils of Geography. It's available on Scribd. It took me about an hour to read it, and I loved it, and I'm not good at talking about poetry, so that's all you're going to hear about it. Check it out. I finished the Saskatchewan novel, They Shouldn't Make You Promise That, by Lois Simi. Great title, great uh, witty writing, but a three-star read because Lois Simi tried to make this a deep tale of a woman finding herself and leaving her marriage, and the serious parts of it just didn't work. The, it was not compelling. It was cliched and not interesting. There's some deaths and some separations, and I just was unmoved by that, but I did chortle a few times. So, three stars. But I finished the year with a bang, not a whimper. I absolutely love that Indian novel, that Tamil Indian novel, One Part Woman by Permal Mergen, translated by Annie Rudan Vasudevan. I'm going to do a full review because I, I need to think about it some more. I haven't had time with my jet lag brain, but I really, really loved it. It was sexy. The writing was great. The story rambled in the most interesting ways. And it's about infertility in a couple and the shame heaped upon them in their community. And it almost reads like a queer story in that way because it just really reminded me of homophobic shaming, being different. And I thought it was absolutely wonderful. He almost was killed by Hindu mobs that were so incensed by the way sexuality and spirituality was portrayed in the novel. And he gave up writing for a few years, but he's back writing, and I want to read much more by Permal Mergen. I should have considered it for one of the best covers of, of the year, too, actually. It's a fabulous cover. Anyway, I've filmed my besties and worsties. It's still in editing, and if I'm going to get this video posted today that one's going to be delayed a day or so but anyway yeah really loved it and i have started a whole swack of books one two three four five 
six, seven, eight. I have started eight books. It's fabulous. One of them is Beautiful Losers by Leonard Cohen. This was a this is a buddy read with Electra. You met her. I took you to the bookstore to show you us choosing the book. And once I got a few pages into it, I realized, no, this is Leonard Cohen's other novel. I never read it. I read his favorite game 30 years ago and loved it and don't remember anything about it. But Beautiful Losers, I never read. I'm not sure it's a Sean book. I'm only about, well, they're very short chapters, so I might be 20 chapters in, but like 8% of the way in. And I'm not sure about it. I'm not hating it. I can't decide whether I'm offended by parts of it. Certainly there's a really horrendously politically incorrect, racist, dirty old man, s secondary character. I haven't quite decided about the, the narrator yet. But certainly interesting reflections or interesting the way he weaves in indigenous Canadian history into it and sexuality and I'm not sure. Electra made me promise during the video at the bookstore that I wouldn't bail so I did and now she's given me permission to bail if I want to. But I don't think I'll bail. It's a short little book. I may not like it but I will finish it. How's that? I, I solemnly swear I will not bail on Beautiful Losers. Otherwise I will Become an ugly loser. Are you watching this, Electra? Any comments? Uh, much more positively, I started and I'm about, almost halfway through my second Cynthia Proper Seton novel, The Half Sisters. The glare on this side is. I'm going to move over. The glare on that is not so great. Uh, I'm loving it. Uh, almost as much so far, I would say almost as much, like 2% less than I loved. The first one I read last year, another buddy read with Ange, The Sea Change of Angela Lewis. This is her next novel chronologically, 1974. I think the writing is really strong, the wit and the pithy observations on human nature and society, the story of women's becoming is just fabulous, and some of the flaws that I noted but didn't give a diddly squat about in and the Angela Lewis novel are present here. She does get a little verbose at times and some of her intellectual dialogues between her characters are not pleasant to read, but that... I was rudely interrupted by my alarm going off and stopping the camera, but anyway, so yeah, I don't care about those little things because the big things I really love. I'm gonna amp up my evangelization about Cynthia Proper Seton, people. The only way to get me to shut up is to start reading these books and giving me your comments, and then I'll know that my work here is done. I did start the Don Quixote read-along, the chapter a day read-along, which will take me till about May 8th. I hated the introduction, but I really just didn't, I skimmed it. But as soon as I got into the to chapter one, it totally grabbed me. It's just hitting me right. This satire or whatever. I mean, if it's a satire, I usually hate satire, but this bumbling idiot. I mean, I was vaguely aware of the story. I think I saw the movie, The, the Man from La Mancha, when I was about 12 years old. And I, all I remember there was there was a windmill. Very dimly aware of the, the story. But just the way the, the prose is hitting me, it's getting me right in the funny bone, and I'm appreciating it, and I, I think I'm going to love it. I think because I lost the day coming back from Canada to Japan, I'm a day behind, so I'm, eventually I'm going to have to read two chapters in one day to be on track, but it, the chapters are short, it's easy to read, it's a complete delight so far. I am doing a novel from last year on audio, The Caregiver by... Samuel Park, I heard Russell talk about it, I think, and a few others. He died, I think, before the novel was published, sadly. I don't know much about him or that, or what, why, or anything. I'm just about finished the second chapter, and I'm finding it quite engaging on audio. I'm not sure I have much else to say. The caregiver is... T yeah, she's Brazilian, and I uh, s certainly have been thinking about their Trump. Trumpian new president, which is really freaking scary, the way how many of those people are coming out of the sewer and taking over countries.
and she's a caregiver for a white woman who's dying of cancer, and I, I couldn't get much of the dynamic of that. And then the second chapter is back to her life, her childhood in Brazil, and I found that uh, quite engaging. So, so far, so good. Ula Goodenson and I have got a bare start on our buddy read of this Icelandic novel, The Woman at a Thousand Degrees by Halgrimur Helgeson. She taught me how to pronounce it. There's actually a T sound somewhere in there. But anyway, I won't take the time to look it up. I may do that before you hear me talk about it again. I've only read... Oh, there's short chapters, so I've read five chapters. I am really enjoying it. It, again, this is about a woman dying, and, and about she's Icelandic, she's 82 years old, Hera Bjornsson, and it's about her life, so it's dipping back into the past, and she's connected with all the, the Icelandic aristocracy, or elite, I should say, and she herself had quite a life, it would seem. It's really funny in English, and fascinating reading it with Ulla, because she's reading it in Danish, and the Danish translation, Danish and Icelandic are very close, linguistically speaking, and she said the English translation, she's not impressed with it. Now, I'm enjoying it as an English speaker, but she said it's really cleaned up the story. There's a lot of kind of jocular rudeness in the dialogue that's not coming through in the English at all. Interesting. And also, it's uh, several, like my English copy is, it's weird. So my English copy is 120 chapters. Her Kindle version of the same novel, translated by the same translator, Brian Fitzgibbons, has a different number of chapters. I can't remember, 115 or 125 or something. And then the Danish book has a, 872. Or like, it's just a wildly divergent the versions that exist of this novel, but the one that I'm reading, six chapters in, I am really enjoying it. And I'm only one chapter into this. This is the buddy read with Ollie Bliss that kept getting bumped, and it's not going to get bumped anymore. The third reel by S.J. Nudia. I have only read one chapter. I absolutely loved the first chapter. It's about a gay... Two gay boys night together, and it's starting, I think, the foundation of the story, the protagonist. But it, it's a one-night stand, and it's, it's not explicit. That would, that would have been fine if it was, but it's not explicitly sexual. It's just very erotic, sensual. The writing is wonderful. Well, I've literally read seven pages, so I don't want to say more than that. And I hope to get back to it today, but certainly tomorrow. But wow, it made a really great impression in the first few pages. I'm a little bit less smitten with this one, but uh, not haven't given up on it by any stretch. I'm a chapter and a half into William Golding's The Spire, which is a buddy read with a bunch of lovely booktubers and other lovely bookish people. I'm finding it a little boring, but yet there's hints of a story that's going to develop that sounds quite interesting. But it's not grabbing me yet. I'm on page 39. I'll finish the second chapter and then weigh in on Voxer and hear how the ladies have made out with it. Because I've only got 10 pages left to read. But uh, it's like a little dry and a little churchy, which often puts me to sleep, but we'll give it a go. And lastly, I didn't put this on my TBR because I kind of forgot, forgot about it. But once I remembered, I ordered it off Amazon. It was delivered last night and I have read the first chapter. This is for Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventure Reading Around the World Book Club. And their January selection is from the country Oman. Celestial Bodies by... Oh dear. I can't find any pronunciation help online, so I will take a stab at it. Joka Alharti. I'm not pronouncing it Alharthi because I do know that the only language in which the TH is pronounced that way, th, is English. So... Joka Alharti is my best guess. The first chapter knocked my socks off. I loved it so much. So it's set in Oman, and the main character, or one of them, is Maya. And she's in love with somebody else, but she gets married off to somebody she's not in love with and has a kid. That doesn't sound very interesting. It was so incredibly riveting. I don't know why. There's just really intriguing 
quirky things that happen amidst that very standard narrative axis, and I couldn't put it down. So I hope that my enthusiasm continues, but it certainly grabbed me by the collar from the get-go. I think I've only got one other book that I'll be starting in the coming week. I think I've got enough going on, don't you? And that is Yasunori Kawabata's Snow Country, a novella from Japan. And I'm buddy reading this with Richard of Richard Reads. And again, my apologies for not getting your name in my head when I mentioned you the first 17 times. But Tina of The Reading Companion. I think we're going to start this on the weekend sometime. And it's a short little book. We'll read it over three or four days. Probably won't even need that much to read it. It's 121 pages. So I will have finished it or have bailed on it by this time next week. That's what I got. I'm starting my 2019 reading year with great enthusiasm. I hope you are too. Tell me all about it in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.